Hello again guys. All right, so in the last video, we worked on setting up our database using Laravel migrations. So I think in this video, we can start working on the registration process. So um, basically what we're gonna do is in the registration controller, we're gonna create um, a, um, a method here where we're gonna validate the user input and then also uh, proceed to register the user after they've successfully completed all the required fields. Okay, so in here, Right, so obviously the first thing is, oh yeah, by the way, we need to import, um, we need to inject the request, um, what you call it, object. Okay, by the way, make sure that it's imported here at the top, it's, which is use illuminate HTTP request. By default, it should be there, but just in case it's not, just type it out as you see it there. All right, so I'm just gonna, I know lately there are new ways in which you can validate user info, but I'm just gonna use the old ways so that, because I know there's gonna be people who are still using the uh, the older layer of versions. And so uh, I'm gonna just keep to the old fashioned way of doing things. So we're gonna call out this method called validate, all right? And then in here, we're gonna pull in the request object and then we're gonna validate the uh, the input fields. All right, so the first one is, if you remember, it's first name, last name, email, and then password, right? So we need first name. Uh, let's just make an array and say required. Um, and then we're gonna say uh, minimum three okay minimum three characters uh we're gonna do the same with the last name so we want to copy that and paste it there all right then we need the email so it's going to be email it's going to be required um you're going to change this uh you're going to flag it so that it's, uh, the user must import a, a validated email and then we're gonna say unique and then users. So basically by saying unique, it's gonna check the users table. So make sure that you type this correctly. Don't, uh, it, it must be exactly as um, uh, the, the exact name of the users, uh, the, 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 the database table you're checking against. All right, so here we're gonna wanna paste it a few more times. So here it's gonna be password. And this one is going to be confirmed. Uh, did I name it confirm? Uh, confirm, yes. All right, so required minimum eight characters for both. Right, and then we can make it also alphanumerical. So we just have to type that alphanum and then for the confirm field, you have to say uh, same as the password field. So basically this will just tell um, um, that um, this confirm field needs to be the same. The passwords need to match here with the, um, with the password field. And then let me just check. I think that's all we need here. Um, Let's go back to the registration field. So here I'm gonna place in um, some validation uh, errors. So the first one I'm gonna do is, and then say um, text danger, right? And then here we'll say errors first, 
and I think we need to put the name there, which is first name, right? I hope that's correct. And then here within the class of the input field, here what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put in some curly braces, then I'm gonna say errors, and then has, um, has a first name, right? Let me close this. Errors has first name. So basically here, I'm gonna use a ternary operator to check and see if this object has the first name field. Um, and then if it does, right? If it does, we're gonna put in that uh, is in is invalid, right? So this is a bootstrap class. So basically if the error is there, it's gonna echo out. Um, it's gonna echo out this bootstrap class, which will give this input field a red border. And then otherwise, if it doesn't, it'll, it'll echo nothing, right? And then the last thing we need to do is say value and say um, hold. And then we're gonna put in again, first name. All right, so this is gonna display the error message below the input field. This is gonna give the input field a red border. All right, so now the last thing I need to do is, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the errors. Now let's just test it out and see how it actually works. Oh, actually, the first thing we need to do here um, is add a method which is post right and then the action we have to go back to our web.php file so remember here we're registering the user right and I'm going to paste it right underneath there so this is going to change from a get to a post so it's basically gonna to post to the same route, but the difference is that this time it's gonna to go to the register um, method, which is the one we created here, register. Okay, and then here we're gonna change this from register to auth.register, okay? So now let's take this named route, copy that, come back to the file, and then in here, we're gonna say route, And then paste that there. So if everything worked, if we did everything correctly, when we submit this form without filling in any input, without filling in any data, since we are requiring it here, it should give it should give this particular field uh, input field a red border and also display the message below here. All right. So let's test it out and see if it works. I'm gonna refresh and let's go to the sign up field. I mean form. So I'm gonna click sign up. Oh yeah, my apologies guys. Um I forgot to actually put in the CSRF token. So let's put it up here. So there's a directive for that which is CSRF, right? So you just have to type that in there. Otherwise, there's also another one, I believe, CSRF, I think field of which you can paste it in like that. And then if you just want the value, you can create a, a hidden field. And then if you just wanna want the, the value, you can just say um, CSRF token. So this basically would be the value of that input hidden field. But let's let's just use the, the current directives that we, are, uh, that we are using here at the top, right? So just add CSRF, that should create a token field. All right, so let's go back, let's refresh. Okay, let's say sign up. All right, so I hope you guys can see that. So as you can see, it's giving it a red border and then it's also displaying the, the error message here at the bottom. All right, guys, so that's basically it. So now I'm gonna pause the video and just do the same thing that I just did now. Uh, I'm basically gonna do everything that I just did now with the first name field to the rest of the fields. So I'm gonna pause the video, do that quickly, and then when I come back, we'll just reevaluate everything. One moment for me, please.
All right, guys, I'm back. Okay, so I've completed all the error messages. So like I said before, I paused the video. All you have to do is just add that text there. Um, oh, by the way, if I didn't explain this errors uh, variable that you see here, this is a global variable that you would by default. Um, it, it's uh, accessible globally. So if there's any errors, this is what you would have to type in in order to get the objects uh, of all the required fields. So um, that's just in case you didn't know. So now um, I've added the first name, last name fields, email. So I basically did the same thing. So if we come to our website, uh, refresh, if I were to click submit, all the fields are gonna show the error messages uh, like we tested when we did the first name field, as you can see there. All right, so now that we we can validate our fields, let's go back to the registration, um, what you call it, um, method. So now after we've validated everything, um, let me just do this. Oh, so I'll just get lost here. Okay, save that. Okay, looks like I made some spelling errors there. Validate. Validate. Okay. Uh, so underneath here, we can proceed to register the user. All right that paste it again okay so here we're going to get the user model object and then uh, call the create um, object i mean method sorry right and then paste it there all right so now we have to make sure let me just quickly log into my sql Right, use um, FLB, uh, describe users. All right, so we may have to make sure that the field names are the same. So it's first name, last name, email, right? So that's what we need. We need uh, first name, last name, uh, email and then what else uh, password all right so um, first name field we're gonna get it from the request object which is going to be a request and then we'll just use an object for that we'll say first name first name okay um, the other way you can do this is say input and then you can place that like that all right so i'll leave that there for now so that you guys can have it so but the rest of them i'm just going to do what i did the first time request right and then i'll say last name um, then the email i'll say And then that's the password. I've got the error function there. All right, so just remember these these fields that we're getting here are these ones that we're getting from the form. So just make sure they are the same. All right, so uh, before we even continue, we need to, I'm gonna copy this. Actually, I don't think we need to, oh yeah, we do, we do. I'm gonna copy this. So I'm gonna to go to the model uh, user. So remember, these are the fillable fields, so we need to change those, paste it in here. So I'm just gonna remove uh, the request objects 
and also remove this. So uh, just make sure that these are the fillable fields that you have. Otherwise, it's going to give you an error. All right, so let's come back to the registration controller. Everything should be fine. All right, so now after we register the user, what we want is that after the user has successfully registered to automatically be logged in and redirected to the dashboard. Now, I know that the, normally with the registration processes, you would have to maybe have the user validate their email and something like that, but let's just keep it simple and not complicate things. So for that to work, oh, by the way, I almost forgot. We need to encrypt the password. So there's a, there's a helper function by Laravel. All we have to do is say B, um, I think it's B crypt, right? And then basically what this is gonna do is hash the, the password for us. Um, just make sure you type that out as well. All right, so here we're gonna auto login or authenticate user. Right, so here we're gonna say auth What am I doing? Auth, uh, we need the auth facade and then say login. And then for this to work, we need to turn this whole, um, we need to create an object for, for that user. So we're gonna say user equals to this, right? This will return the last inserted user. And then here, we're gonna put that user object in here to auto uh, log in the, the user. And then after that, we're gonna redirect to the dashboard, all right? So we direct, sorry, I have to say return, we direct, and then we wanna say route, so app.dashboard. So just remember, this is what we named our dashboard. This is the name route, so it's app.dashboard. So make sure you put in whatever you named um, as your dashboard. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's see, let's go to, let's go, come here and refresh. Uh, we currently don't have any users. If you check the result set is empty, so Let's just put in here John Doe with the fake password. And then the password here is going to be simple password one, two, three. Password two, three. Let's press enter. Okay, so as you can see, um, the user should be registered. And then now, if you check, there should be a user um, registered, which is the John Doe. Uh, so that we can see what's going on there. Let me say slash, I mean space dash backslash G. So that's our user there. All right. So now this user currently is logged in. There's a session already created. So now let's work on um, a few things. As you can see here, we have the sign in and sign up button. Now we need to change this so that when the user is logged in, um, he sees a different button. So there's an easy way to do this, right? So if we come back to, um, if we come back, I'm just gonna close some of these folders. So if you come back to our navigation, right? This is where we are displaying the sign in and sign up buttons. So here, the simplest thing we can do, there's a directive, a blade directive, which is at, um, at guest, sorry, guest, what? Right, and then we're gonna paste that there. So what this is basically gonna do is, um, all right, so basically what this does by wrapping these two buttons here with the at guest directive, it basically checks if there's a logged in user. If there's no logged in user, um, it's basically checking if there's a session, in, uh, there's a logged in user session, if there is, it's not gonna display these two buttons. I'll show you now. If I were to refresh now, you'll see those two buttons are not gonna show. They are now gone, right? So when the user is logged out, it'll show um, it'll sh it'll show these two buttons, all right? 
um, I think we can leave this these two here. We don't need to change them. Now, um, the other thing we need to do is create a button for when the user is logged in, right? So here, let me see. Uh, yeah, let's just create a simple button. So let's just say um, anchor tag btn dot btn sm uh, no md and then dot btn uh, outline uh, I'll say light right and then let me see I think that's it and then here we are going to um, we are going to add um, sign out right I think we should also give it an icon let's say I let's say uh, class FA and then FA let me see sign out and then M N M E two right uh, let's just see how it looks if you come back here all right so we see the sign out button okay that's not showing the icon so let me just make some changes there see if it works doesn't work uh, pass still doesn't work so let me add the Araya hidden and let's say true let's see it's not showing let me say fab again. Still not showing. All right, so let me see. How am I going to do this? Uh, FA. Uh, let's just say arrow circle right. Yeah. Let's see if that one shows. Okay, so that one shows. Uh, we will change this later on, but for now, let's just use this. So we've got the sign out button, right? So now, here's another thing we need to do. We need to wrap this with another with another um, directive, which is the auth directive, right? We paste it there. So basically, what this does is that it checks and sees if there's a if there's a user session. Um, if there is a user that's logged in, if there's a user session, if there is, it's going to display this button. If there isn't, the ones that are going to display are these two. So now let's work on creating the form to um, to, um, to log users out. Uh, just a second here. Right. Um, All right, so here underneath this, I'm just going to create a form. And then this form is um, not going to show anything, but what we're going to place in here, uh, let me create a comment. Okay. Right. So in here we're gonna add a CSRF token. Okay. So this is going to be a post method. Okay. And then what we need to do is I'm gonna give this an ID. Right. Um, what should I call this? Sign out form. All right, I'll make sure to correct that mistake there. Okay, so now what we need to do is when we click on this button, we need it so that um, it executes a JavaScript function. All right, so from there, we're gonna say, um, 
let me see. Uh, all right, that's fine. So we're gonna say, sorry, we need to come bail. So on click, on click is gonna equal to let's say event dot prevent default. And then we're gonna say document dot get uh, element. Right, and then here we want to get the ID we gave the form, which is sign out form. Right, okay, so then we're gonna say dot submit curly braces. And you see that? So let me just put this on a new line so that we can see what's going on. All right, I'm going to place a comment here. Okay, so that's our sign up form. So let me just verify. So we've got the um, we've got the um, um, what you call it uh, the on click event so which is the um, this is going to call this form here so now we need to create a logout uh, method within the login controller so that we can um, log out of the system so for that we have to come in here So just remember we are logging we are in the login controller now okay so it's public uh, function uh, let's just say log out all right so now for that, we're going to need the auth facade. Uh, log, log out, right? That's basically all we need to do. Uh, actually, there's another, there's a couple of more things as well. So, request. And then we're going to say, uh, invalidate and then after that we're gonna say um oh yeah I need to pull in the request object right and then Here we're gonna regenerate session token. Then after the user has logged out, we're gonna redirect them back to the home page. Let me copy this. Okay, so now that we've created this, we now need to come to the web file and then the login. Oh, apologies for that. All right, so this is gonna be a post request and then it's gonna look into the log out method and then here we'll just say log out i know we haven't worked yet on the login uh, process yet but we will get to that 
I think in the next video. So all right, so this is what we basically need. So now we have to come back to the nav uh, nav blade, uh, the nav file. This is where we have our sign out form. So here you can then now say routes log out. Okay. Uh, let me just double check here. I'm sorry, let's just not let's not call that login. Let's say log out. Makes much more sense. I'm trying to say login doesn't make sense. All right, so that's basically it. And then basically um I think that's all we need. Let me just double check again. Um CSRF token method is post action log out. Uh let's see um how it's actually displaced. All right, everything seems to be okay so far. All right, now, um, here we don't need to have this. All right, I'm just double checking again what we need. Um, I think that's everything. So hopefully if I've done everything correctly, um, when we click on the sign out button, um, it should log us out and then you'll see once we have logged out this button is no longer going to show what's going to show is the two sign in and sign up buttons so let's see if it works all right so as you can see now the sign in and sign up button are now showing and then the sign out button doesn't no longer show and that's due to the two directives that we added here so the auth one the auth directive will check and see if there's a user who's logged in and then if there is, it will display this content. Otherwise, if the user is not logged in, which is a guest, the person visiting the website, it will show these two buttons. So as you can see, uh, there's a couple of things that Laravel has um, um, that Laravel has under what you call it that has by default that makes it easy for us to handle such things. So now that we've logged in, let's go back to the dashboard, right? So if you check. Um, sorry. Why is it refusing? Uh, dashboard. Okay, so as you can see, we're not supposed to access this page without logging in. So, and then as you can see, because we're not signed in, that you those two buttons are showing. So now we need to protect this page so that um, only logged in users can have it. And then that's pretty much simple. Um, all we have to do within our route file is we can come here and then just chain the middle middleware method right and we can just say auth right and so uh, the other thing is that once the middleware runs it needs to redirect the user to the login page so there's a couple of things as well that we need to check so i'm going to come here um and i'm going to go to middleware uh let's see uh, no, that's fine. Authenticate, uh, login, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so let's try again. So when I refresh this, this should redirect us to the login page. So as you can see, now it's redirecting us to the login page. Okay, so um, I think so far that's pretty much it. Uh, no, actually there's one more thing. Um, let's close this. Let's close the forms. Uh, let's come here. So if you remember, we have the drop down uh, list. So basically, this is when uh, let's go back to the home page. So basically, this is when our website is in mobile view. So for this button, we didn't set up these two login sign in and sign up buttons to go to the sign in and sign up page. So let's change that. So we can copy what we did here. And paste it there and then copy this and paste it there all right so now if we refresh and if i click on sign in it should take me to the login page as you can see there uh, let's go back if i click on the sign up one as well it should take me there as well so that's the, that's working fine. Now, 
we're going to do the same thing we did with these two buttons here. So we're going to say guest and then paste it there. So these two will show once the uh, once the um, once the user is not signed in, it will display. Uh, let's just refresh again. Let's see. All right, they're still showing. And then for the auth for the authenticated user, we'll say auth. And then basically, I'm just going to copy everything we did in here. I know I'm repeating myself, uh, which is bad practice, but uh, let's just do this for now. I'm going to indent that a little bit. All right. So now in this drop down menu list, uh, we will also add other links once the user is uh, logged in, like the dashboard link. So, um, um, so for now, this won't show. Uh, um, this won't show until we have uh, a logged in user. So let's just. I think we can end the video here for now. I think we've done everything we needed in terms of registering users and what the user gets to see uh, once they've logged in, and then, and then. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Um, I think we can end the video here. So in the next video, we're going to start working on the login process. Uh, that shouldn't take too long as well. So I hope you guys were able to follow with what I was doing in this video. Um, but yeah, again, guys, if you've liked what you've seen so far, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys within the next video. Cheers for now.